And the people were like, the, had, who had seen it before were like, oh my gosh, this is just doesn't look anything in comparison. But God said, don't worry, my glory is going to be greater in this place than it was before. And, you know, and sometimes we can look at, well, you know, we're a small church. We're in LaSalle, Illinois. We're not in a big city like Chicago. But God says, don't worry, Christ family, Foursquare Church. The greater glory is coming, you know. And in chapter 1, uh, or then it said, talked about God shaking the heavens and the earth. And we've seen that the last, like, five years, right, that there has definitely been a shaking in the earth of God getting people's attention. And usually when he does that in history, he's about ready to do something. And he's been getting the church ready, right? And so he's been stirring us uh, as our church and just the church worldwide. In Haggai chapter 1, the people were saying, hey, it's not time to build the house of the Lord. But God said, no, 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 it is time to build the house of the Lord. He's called us to be strong and to work, doing what God has called us to do. And we, of course, have a physical building, but building the spiritual house, the spiritual house that's getting ready for the more of the glory of God. And it said, God said, I am with you. That's the key, <laughs> that God is with us in all of this. And he stirred the, the hearts, the spirits of the, the leaders and the whole remnant of the people to work and get the house of the Lord ready for his glory. And, you know, what, what is your role in building the spiritual house? You know, in the natural, you know, they had people probably, you know, doing the, uh, the mortar or whatever, built, putting whatever they used, brick or stone, I don't know what they used, uh, people with the wood and getting the frames and all that, people working on doors, people working on windows, whatever. And for us in building the spiritual house, you know, we can be asking the Holy Spirit, what, what's, what am I to do right now for this season, for this time? Because all these things that I'm going to mention are things that we are, can, should do daily, but there's sometimes there's a season where something like stirs up that we do a little bit more, we, we, we concentrate a little bit more, like maybe the Lord's stirring in you to, to pray, you know, just uh, maybe God's putting people or uh, the church or the Illinois Valley or different things on your heart, and you're like, wow, why am I keep thinking of this? And it's like, oh, I need to be praying for this, right? And, and you start praying for those things. Uh, maybe um, the Lord stir in your heart to be a, a season of fasting, and, and you kind of do that, you know, as the Spirit leads you. Um, maybe there's a, a time of the worship and praise that, yes, we can turn on worship and praise in our car and our home and everything, and that's great, but really getting focused time, but just you and the Lord, of just worshiping him and praising him. That's all building that spiritual house. Uh, maybe the Lord's stirring on you of, of uh, witnessing a little bit more than you have, that you're like, you know what? You know, I, I just have this, this burden for the, for the lost and for the souls and be praying that God gives you that boldness and courage and, and that the Lord would open your eyes to see different people in different situations that you might be able to, to go in and, and to minister, share a, a seed of, of the word of God and, and, um, and to do that. Uh, maybe your spiritual language, you know, my dad was talking about speaking in tongues, you know, that's a, a gift from God. And um, if, if you haven't been using that in a while, maybe the Lord's stirring you, hey, start using your spiritual language more. But whatever, the Holy Spirit can speak to you, you know, uh, again, doing all these things on a daily is very important. But maybe there's something that he's highlighting a little bit more, getting into the word a little bit more, you know, standing on his promises that are yes in Christ Jesus and, and just saying, God, help me to understand it more, believe it more, walk in it more. You know, all of these things are building that spiritual house. Well, today we're going to talk about God as our heavenly father because he is the best father we could ever imagine or dream. I know we have amazing fathers out there today, but God surpasses all of us. <laughs> And um, in Romans 8, 
verses 15 and 16. It says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Isn't that a blessing that we are God's children? <laughs> that God loves us? He's, he's adopted us? And uh, we, we're going to live with him for all eternity. Uh, James 1, 17, it says, For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. That our Father, he gives us good gifts. You know, your heavenly Father loves you very much. And he, we need to just stop sometimes and just thank him, right? To thank God, you know, it doesn't have to be on Father's Day, it can be every day, right? But just thank God for being such a wonderful father to us. We're gonna look at a few things that God as our father does for us. Uh, of course, there's a million more, but uh, we're just gonna look at a few here today. Our Heavenly Father gives us wisdom when we ask. In James 1, verses five through eight, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. And that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So going to your heavenly fathers, realizing, hey, this, this is a good father. This is a God, father that loves me. If I ask for this wisdom, he's going to give it to me and, and not doubt and uh, God being so good, he will bless us with wisdom. In Proverbs 9.10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. All throughout Proverbs, it encourages us to get wisdom. You know, to, you know wisdom just doesn't just download into you. You know, God can do that, but it's, it's actively pursuing wisdom. God and his word and actively saying, God, what do I do in this situation? Give me your wisdom. Give me your direction. And we can learn from mistakes. We can learn through things in life. But it's, it's the fear of the Lord, staying close to God, trusting him. And God will lead you in wisdom if you search for it. And God will bless you if you do. Uh, second thing, our Heavenly Father, he disciplines us. <laughs> That's not a fun thing, Right? We don't like to talk about that too much, but um, aren't you glad that your parents disciplined you to a degree, right? <laughs> maybe some disciplined a little too much, maybe some not enough, but we all need discipline in our lives. And in Hebrews 12, verses 4 through 11, it says, In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood and have completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a, as a father addresses his son. It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. And he chastens everyone he accepts as his children. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, um, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while uh, as, the, as, as though best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. You know, and, and God disciplines us, you know, because he doesn't want us going walking away from his word, walking away from him, you know, and ultimately, you know, the, the eternal punishment with that, he disciplines us because he loves us. You know, when we're doing something right, we, we have that peace, don't we? You know, when we're doing something we know is wrong in our life, 
it's that guilt and that condemnation and that fear and that shame and all that stuff that we're battling, right? Um, so that God's gracious discipline for us is because he loves us. He doesn't want us to walk in that fear and that anxiety and that worry and stuff. He wants us to walk in righteousness and in, in his peace. Um, our Heavenly Father is with us always and he helps us. Let's look at Isaiah 41, verses 10 and 13, Isaiah 41, verses 10 and 13. This is the Lord speaking, and he says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In verse 13, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isn't it a blessing that God is with you always, right? The Bible tells us, you know, he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Isn't it great that God is there to help you in any and every situation? If, 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 you're, if you're willing, you know, it's kind of like my dad, right? I, I can ask for his help or I don't have to ask for his help right? And, you know, he's human, and he can help what he can do, and he's been a huge help in my life, and I appreciate it, but God is always with us, right? He's 24-7 with us, and we can ask for his help 24-7, you know, from the littlest things to the big. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm not going to bother God with this. Bother him with everything. (laughs) It's not a bother to God at all. He loves to help, Good fathers love to help their kids, right? And so God is there with us all the time, and he's there to help us. He's there to strengthen us. Doesn't life get hard sometimes? Don't, isn't it better to move in the strength of God Almighty with us to do the things we need to do than just try to do it in our own strength? God is there. He says, I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a protection. What a comfort right? Just to know that God is with us and he's got us in his right hand. He says, don't fear. I will help you. I don't know about you guys, but there's too many things in this life that try to bring fear into my life. And I got to say, stop and say, nope, God, this is, this is yours. <laughs> Give me wisdom what I need to do. Give me the strength to do what I need to do. Help me, be with me, strengthen me. But, but ultimately, you got to take care of this. This is bigger than me, and, and God is there helping us, as a good father does, to get us through. He doesn't promise it's going to be easy. He doesn't promise you know, that you're not going to be involved doing work. He just promises, hey, I'm going to be with you to help you through this. He's a good, loving father. And um, our father is compassionate, and he's gracious. Let's look at Exodus 34. verses 6 and 7. Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. It says, And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished he punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation yes there is the the judgment and the punishment for those who just live their life wickedly and and you know rebel against god but for those who come <laughs> And say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. God, I'm going to follow you. God, make me your child. Adopt me in your family. It says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. Man, God is so compassionate with us, right? When you're going through just hard times, nobody understands. You know, maybe people aren't even there, whatever. The compassionate God can just move in and just wrap you around his loving arms. He knows what you're going through. 
You, you, you don't, you know, he, he's God. I can't explain it. He just knows what you're going through. He knows what's in your heart, what's in your mind, your body, your soul, everything. He knows what's going on. He knows that. And he has compassion on you. And he's gracious. I think too many times we get this image in our mind that God is just ready to just zap us when we do something bad, right? He's, he's the God of anger. He's the God of, um, you know, just discipline, you know. He's the God of whatever, just ready to just watch me fail and laugh at me, right? And that's a lie from the pit of hell. God is compassionate. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. Thank God for that. Abounding in love and faithfulness. Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Aren't you glad your sins are forgiven? <laughs> Through the blood of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And man, matter we've blown it a hundred times yesterday. We, we say, God, forgive me. God forgives us. He forgives us. He's compassionate. He's gracious. Thank God for his mercy. He doesn't give us what we deserve. <laughs> the people who say, I, I, I want to get what I deserve, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I hope I never say that because <laughs> what I deserve is not good. <laughs> but God, out of his mercy, doesn't give me what I deserve, but out of his grace, he blesses me. Doesn't he bless you? <laughs> yes. Isn't it great to just stop and think of the blessings in your life? Yes. I mean, think of your family, <laughs> Think of just your home, what you have. Think of being able to come into a church to worship them without having to go underground and people having to, trying to kill you or throw you in jail. Like we, there's just so much to be thankful for. God gives us wisdom when we ask. He disciplines us when we need it. He's always with us and he helps us. He strengthens us. He upholds us with his right hand and he's compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness and he forgives our sins. How could we not thank our heavenly father? These are just four, four or a little more we maybe went over, but just of all, I mean, we can't really We'd be here all day and forevermore going over the goodness of God, of how, who he is and what he does for us. But can we just, just stand? We're closing out here. Just stand for a minute. and Just thank God, your Father, in your own way. I'm not going to lead anything. It's just you just from your heart, just, just thank him for being such a wonderful, wonderful father. Thank you. And you know that that's something we can do every day, right? Not just on Father's Day, <laughs> because he deserves it. Isn't it good to be adopted into the family of God? <laughs> He's so good. Well, happy Father's Day to all those amazing fathers out there. We, for all the guys, we have a, a little gift for you in the back, so make sure you, you get it as um, you got a couple options but in the back over there, my, uh, I think Abby and my son are going to pass those out. But um, let me just say a, a, a closing prayer, and then you're dismissed. God, we thank you. Lord, all of us love you. And
thank you from the bottom of our heart for being an amazing father. Those things that we went over today, but so many other things, we ask that you would help us to be better fathers, better natural fathers, better spiritual fathers to those around us, and put your spirit upon us and your word within us, and give us your wisdom, Lord, your discipline when we need, your your help and, and knowing you're with us and your compassion and grace and all the things. We love you and we honor you today and say happy Father's Day, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Have a great rest of your day.